Hi, this is Mr. Moss, and in this video, we're going to be looking at using graph paper area models to help you with two digit by one digit and two digit by two digit multiplication. So let's take a look. So you can use graph paper to represent a lot of different forms of multiplication. Let's take a look from a very basic standpoint. I could show, for example, uh, let's say four times three. Four times three. So I can show that by drawing a rectangle that's one, two, three units down, and one, two, three, four units wide. So four times three is an easy one, and I can figure out the total by saying that it's four in one direction three in another. This is a great way to also introduce the skill of finding area, uh, which we'll cover in a geometry unit, but four times three equals 12. Now we also use this same skill to be able to visualize larger multiplication problems. This is one digit by one digit, but I can also use graph paper for two digit by one digit. Let's say instead I had uh, let's pick a color that will show up a little better. Let's say that I had 14 times 3. Well, I can draw a rectangle that's 14 units wide. Let's take a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. By 3, 1, 2, 3. The problem is, is I have to ask myself, how does this help me? Because, yeah, I could just do 14 plus 14 plus 14, or I could do 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 14 times. But those don't seem very efficient. I could sit here and try 14 rows of 3. That's 14 times 3. That doesn't help me. I already have 14 times 3. So what we encourage the students to do is to look at decomposing 14 to see what that's made up of. So in this case, 14, if I draw that as a number bond here, 14 decomposes to, it could decompose a lot of ways, but if we're doing expanded form, 14 decomposes to 10 and 4, because you've got the 1 in the 10s place and the 4 in the 1s place. So I can use that to help me out. I can, instead of just calling this rectangle 14 units from from end to end, what I can also do is break this up right here, and I can say that I have 10 and 4, and both of those have a height of 3. Where that's helpful is I can say, all right, if, if I have 10 by 3, then I could do 10 times 3. Well, I know that that's 30. That's a little bit easier for me. And 4 times 3, and I know that that answer is 12. And then I just have to add up 30 plus 12, and I know that the answer is 42. That's my total. By subdividing it up based on expanded form and decomposing my um, my, frac my, uh, my larger factor, it makes it easier for me to do the multiplication. The downside here is I can do this with uh, 14 because I can fit that on my graph paper here, but I can't go that much bigger. I think I can fit as much as 22 or so on this kind of graph paper. So if I had, instead of 14 times 3, if I had 34 times 3 or 54 times 3, I don't have enough room. I'd have to tape together multiple pieces of graph paper. That doesn't really work for me. Um, I will show you. I've got some uh, smaller graph paper, so I could certainly show larger amounts here, but we're going to come to that in a moment. Now, another option is to do this with two digit by two digit. So this should look pretty familiar to you. I can do, uh, let's say, 14 times instead of three, let's say, 13. So in this case, I'm going to start off drawing my rectangle and doing, I hope I have enough room here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we're going to need this one to make 13, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, look how long this is taking me, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So let's draw our rectangle, where are we stopping there, I think? 
And again, this it, this rectangle represents 14 times 13. I could sit here and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 8. But that's going to take me too long. It's not going to really be productive for me. I can sit there and add 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus 14 or 13, 13, 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13. But that's really not helping me with my multiplication. What I can do is recognize that 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14 can be divided into 10 and 4, right? Because that's 14 decomposed into expanded form. Just like 13 can be divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 13 can be divided into 10 and three and i can multiply those two and say 10 times 10 if we come together 10 times 10 equals 100 and 10 and 4 come together 10 times 4 equals 40. and now i've got here 3 and 10 3 times 10 3 times 10 equals 30 and i see 3 times 4 equals 12. So that could be a helpful option for me. Then all I have to do is add them up. 100 plus 40 plus 30 plus 12. We've got 2. 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 1 is 8. 1 plus nothing is 1. 182. The thing is when you look at this, the downside here is that when I look at this, I can you know, yeah, it helps me to be able to count it and to visualize it. But A, I'm limited in how big of a uh, equation I can use. Again, 24 by 53 would be too big for this graph paper. I could fit it onto the smaller graph paper. But there's still the other limitation of the fact that this is really time consuming. So we look at this as a fundamental starting point for kids to be able to visualize why it works and why I can draw an area model. But then we start to transition them away from using graph paper like this to instead uh, being able to just draw it out. So if I had 54 times 26, for example, instead of having to count out 54 squares across on graph paper, 24 squares up and down on graph paper, instead, I can just draw an area model here. I like to put my lines a little bit off center to represent the idea that the bigger numbers are always here and here. The smaller values are here and here, the ones place. 54 decomposes to 50 and 4. And 26 decomposes to 20 and 6. By the way, I could have put 50 and 4 here, 20 and 6 here. 50 times 20. Well, I know that 5 times 2 is 10, and that's 10 times greater, 100 times greater. So I'm going to put my two zeros. I've got 1,000. 20 times 4, that's 80. 50 times 6. Well, I know that 5 times 6 equals 30, and I'm going th uh, 10 times larger. That's 300. And lastly, 6 times 4 is 24. And so now I just have to add them up. 1,000 plus 300. I always like to go in order from largest to smallest. Plus 80 plus 24. Add them up. We've got 4, 0, regrouping. 4, 1, 1,404. So you can see where starting with an area model like 4 times 3 can lead us to 14 times 3 which can lead us to 14 times 13. And then once we understand the concept behind that, we can just draw our own without having to count out boxes. We can draw our own area model to be able to work with larger numbers. This has been Mr. Moss working with you on two-digit and one-digit uh, multiplication with both graph paper area models and a little test, a uh, little taste rather, of just drawing it out uh, on plain paper. Hope this is a helpful guide for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.